Hey, it's John and Mike, RudeAshDews.com. And yeah, we're back to the old Zoom call. Got a little bit of the old vid at my house. And so we're just taking some precautions. Trying to, you know, at least not spread to Mike. That's all I'm worried about. And I hope it's you're truly, very important. worried about that. Very too. important. <laughs> very, very important. But we still have beer. And people still drink on video, I guess. We certainly do. Uh, I've been doing that every week since uh, the beginning of 2013. So welcome to Homebrew Exchange number 45. Uh, this is a beer swap that uh, we received, well, actually, I personally received on my front doorstep um, from a guy named Bill right here in Massachusetts. You got to yeah. love the local home brewers who don't want to pay for shipping, and I don't blame them. There's a lot of money that goes into that, and also the fear of bottles breaking because of your, you know, <laughs> your yeah. uh, your shipper uh, not uh, paying attention to the uh, fragile label at the top of the box. Anyway, he gave us three beers. Um, you can see there's a couple behind me, but one right here in my hand is a Boston Lager, we're going to call it a Boston Lager clone. It's a Sam yes. Adams inspiration. Lager inspiration beer. And um, I'm going to have Mike uh, evaluate as, uh, as he does. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the beer because I have the recipe right here in front of me, courtesy of a brewer's friend. Uh, this is a, uh, a lager. And I'll just go through the fermentables of the grain bill. Um, it's got some raw uh, standard two row pale malt in there. And then a little bit of Crystal 60. His, um, his hops are as follows. He's got some Tetnanger and Halatau Mittelfur um, at various stages in his uh, brewing process, starting off at a, a, a 60 minute uh, 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 addition, but also at 20 minutes, at 10 minutes, at five minutes, and then he's doing some dry hopping at day five of fermentation. Um, you know, standard mash um, at 150 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Um, he is, it's looking like he's working with um, distilled or reverse osmosis water. Yeah, it, uh, it might be. He is I'm just looking at like the, the water profile he's targeted, um, Brewer's Friends balance profile. Um, he's adding some calcium chloride, some gypsum uh, to it. Uh, interesting enough, he did put a wolf lock tablet into this and a little bit of yeast nutrient to do its thing. Uh, the yeast he used uh, that I think caught Mike's eye, uh, of course, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, is the safe lager, German lager yeast, W34-70, um, which Mike has used to some success, I would say, even though he said, you know, I think there was so, some time when you were like, yeah, there missed, this might be uh, pooping out, maybe, I don't know. But uh, all good stuff on paper for sure. The uh, starting gravity on this, uh, according to the sheet, is uh, 1044, finishing at 1007. Around 5% uh, ABV on this and an IBU of just over 28. <laughs> We're still talking IBUs, right? Yeah, of um, course. So, so that's that. This was a five gallon batch uh, and it can be certainly found on Brewer's Friend. It's the Billy B.S. Harrison Lager. <laughs> At least that's what the, the URL says, but it's a Billy B's Harrison Lager. All right. So uh, the color is very nice, I think. I think that is the... Uh, that is a good um, yeah, Sam it's, Adams uh, it's lager spot on. color. Mm. And it's clear. I mean, it's it's not uh, dead ring or crystal clear, but it is very clear. Mm. Just a very subtle amount of, of haze to it. Uh, very, very subtle. Um, but yeah, um, you know, so for first thing right off the bat, and this is by no means that I do this by accident, but I'm actually drinking it out of one of those Sam Adams ah. glasses. Um, that was a total coincidence, total coincidence. I grabbed the glasses before I pulled the beers out of the fridge. Um, so John and I, for sure, being from the Boston area, and I'm sure uh, Bill's in the same boat, um, for as long as I can remember drinking craft beer, even in my college days back in the 90s, I probably definitely drank my fair share 
a few body weights worth of Sam Adams, <laughs> right? We've definitely drank plenty yeah. of Sam Adams over the years. Um, and so it's cracking this open and smelling it and looking at it and tasting it. Um, it is actually triggering a lot of those Sam Adams palate memory. Like it's so, wow. I, I think, I mean, it's, it's relatively close. It's, uh, I think the color spot on last time I had a Sam Adams, before I poured it out, my mind remembered it being darker, but it actually was lighter than I remember it. And I don't know if it's actually changed over the 20 something years that I've been Maybe. drinking it. Yeah. Um, but um, I think this is probably pretty close in color. Um, but when I smell it, there's definitely that, there's a touch of that. There's a fruity hop character, like a subtle fruity hop character that is very Sam Adams, right? So it's definitely that middle fruit and Jim Cook and all the old commercials talks about that a lot, Hallertown middle yep. fruit. Mm -hmm. I think um, that maybe in this combination of Tetanang, it definitely works there, but there's also a little bit of a sweet malty background uh, supporting it. So I think it has to do with that yeah. noble hop character a little bit of a floral spicy hop character with enough sweetness from that malt um it's really interesting that the crystal 60 is only five percent of the grain bill yet you get this color and there's so much maltiness there right oh, just no. two row yeah, no. and just a little bit of crystal malt it's amazing how malty it is. so for me the flavor profile of the malt bill really is pretty spot on it's spot on the funny thing about the hops is I'll start like at the end, I'm left with this Sam Adams residual experience, <laughs> right? Yeah. This Boston lager residual experience um, of that middle fruit, the tetanang, that spicy, now it's more of that spicy hop character that sort of lingers in there. Um, the bitterness up front, when it first hits your tongue, it's so good. When it first hits your tongue, <laughs> you definitely, it definitely hits you as being oh, this might be Boston Lager, actually. It tastes, I'm getting that classic, uh, that that Boston Lager spicy thing right up front. Um, but then it just, it doesn't deliver as strongly bitterness-wise as I expected it to, right? I think if it's just a little bit more of a bitter punch, and that could very well also be a water chemistry thing, maybe this looks, this is a balance between chloride and sulfate, and maybe just... Mm -hmm getting a little higher in sulfate would push the hops as they are towards carrying a little bit more of a bite. Um, I certainly don't want it to be IPA biting, but the thing that makes Boston Lager, or at least used to make it so interesting is that it had a fair amount of hop bite to yeah, it, it in the yeah. day, right? I mean, now yeah. we don't, our palace don't recognize it as strongly as we used to, but it was, it's a significant thing. I mean, um, I think so this, this hop bill, I'd have to drink a lot more of it and think of it about it more, but there might just be some movements in the hop character to get that, the rest of it. But it's like, this this beer is like rounding third, right? It's like almost there, right? It's almost there. Yeah, I agree. Um, I, I, I Spot on, I think everything that you said is how I feel about it as well. It's, it's that, um, it's the bitterness punch. And I'm going to look just clear. Like, I just want to see yeah. how much it was at the 60 minute. Um, you know, he's putting an ounce of uh, tetanag. An ounce or, of tetanag, yeah. Yeah. Um, Let's bump it up to an ounce and a quarter or something. Aroma wise, I mean, aroma wise, it, it's, I, I wish I had one next to it. Aroma wise, it really reminds me of yeah. Boston Lager. It, aroma wise, it's right there. The malt bill and the hop presence and the fermentation character. Mm. That lager fermentation character, it's right there. I mean, mm. it's right there. Aroma wise, it's spot on. Um, malt wise, it tastes spot on. I just need a little more hot bite. Yep. I'd even bump it up to an ounce and a half just to see. Yeah. You know, yeah. And go with that. Um, now, I don't know when this was brewed. In his notes, there's some comments from June. So maybe the hot ferret characters faded a little bit. And maybe, uh, maybe when it's says, fresh. If you look right. at his oh, awesome yeah, label, the, the, the date brewed was November 12th of... Oh, you know what? I think his notes were from his last time he brewed it then. Yeah. He's going to put in the yeah. comments. He's like, yeah, you're a moron. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So date bottle. All right. So then, yeah. Well, that's good then. So it really is more representation of what's really happening in the recipe. 
um, mm. which is cool. Yeah, maybe just a little bit more, a little bit more hot bite. Um, cool. But great representation of uh, a beer that, as Mike put it, we have had a lot of for sure. Uh, probably a ton of, ton of. Yeah, that's true. You know, uh, it used to be the only beer you'd get when you'd go into like a local restaurant and you didn't, when you were first really exploring craft beer and you're like, oh, I drink craft beer. Like this is the only thing you could get in a lot of restaurants. <laughs> and it was like yeah. a lifesaver. It was a lifesaver, really. Agreed. So yeah, really, this is great effort. This is really great. Right on. This is no, like, I'm good. I great beer say, to start like... off. It's a great beer to start off the 2022 brew dudes tasting for videos, right? I just sampling yeah. video wise, that what a great beer to start with. Yeah, we'll take it for the swap too, man. Yep. Um, for sure. Yeah, I, we he gave us uh, two other beers. Um, one was a uh, pastry stout. It was a chocolate stout with that uh, was brewed with uh, donuts. Donuts, in, uh, yeah, and a little donut shop nearby. Yep. Um, being from this area of Massachusetts, we know of this donut shop for sure. Yes, we do. And then the other one was a was a Martzen, but um, yep. we already done Martzens, I guess. <laughs> yeah, as <laughs> far as still, on yeah. camera with swaps, but we 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 talked beforehand. We'll probably taste these. We'll compile some notes for Bill and and send them off right Not on. That he, you know who the hell are we but you know um we're gonna do it we're gonna do it anyway we're just two dudes drinking on a zoom call on I mean, a zoom call yeah that's what you do on posting zoom, right? that on youtube right yep i mean that's yep. that's what you do in these uh prolonged covid days uh so thank you bill um from massachusetts for the beer uh we will get back to you on the other ones if you want to send this beer to, um, certainly if you don't live in Massachusetts, we do accept uh, packages. Um, you can contact us through our, our email address uh, via the, uh, the website. If you go to brew-dudes.com and you click on the little link for the contact section, you'll see our email address. But if you want to write it down or at least memorize it, it's dudes at brew-dudes.com. That's our email address. Um, thank you so much. We appreciate you watching. We appreciate free beer. We appreciate kicking off 2022 the right way. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel because no matter what, through <laughs> raging infections in some guy's home, we do this kind of thing every single week with John and Mike, brewdashdudes.com. Brew on. Cheers.